What can I say? People like to drink. College guys like to do it. Middle-aged people like to do it. People who just turned 21 like to do it. People like to do it. And alcoholism has been around as long as sliced bread. I mean, probably longer. And the city of Portland, where I dwell, sweet, cool, quirky, keep it weird, hipster Portland, was a haven for alcoholics back in the day, the earlier portion of the 20th century. Alcoholics were like a, a pandemic in and of themselves. They were everywhere. Men, women, young, old, successful, transient. It didn't matter. This city was peppered in alcoholics. And a lot of them were probably getting arrested for engaging in all sorts of random mischief. Not that I'm going to talk about anything like that today. Ah, it is April 11th, 2021. You know what that means? Another day, another story. And I've got one for you from 1921. Exactly 100 years ago to the day. This day in history. But before I get to today's story, that is not going to involve alcohol in any way, shape, or form. Remember, as always, like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon, all those little things that help my little channel grow. There's construction up here, so I'm going to have to weave myself around. I don't know if that's the right right uh, word to use but uh the link to my patreon is in the description below i'm always posting new stuff there to give you bang for your buck the links to my instagram and facebook pages are also in the description below that are close related to the content that i am posting here as well as my primary youtube channel steve the amateur historian and all that said i need to get myself turned around so we can start today's story Okay, well now that that problem is literally behind me, we can get on with today's story. So this guy named William McIntyre stumbles into a police station, drunk as hell. The local police, they're used to this stuff. They're used to dealing with drunks, they're used to drunks giving them all sorts of random stories that are the project of their fracturing mind they'll you know make up all sorts of reasons about why they were drunk here or why they did this while they were drunk drunkity drunk 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 and so usually whatever explanations or stories any of these people have to give the police take it with a grain of salt because they have all the reason in the world to to do so and possibly one of the most absurd efforts in this in this arena was given by mr william mcintyre who in april 1921 stumbled into a police station and they just, at the moment he walked in they said he like was ambling in like this guy could barely stay on his feet so they're like oh great you know it's hard enough having to bust all the drunks out on the street now they're coming into our station and william mcintyre probably just you know slurring his brains out gives this random story to the police and the reason he's there he's not like informing on someone he wants the police to arrest him he doesn't really give the explanation for why he wants to be arrested uh maybe there's some oddball guilt in there somewhere you know alcohol uh makes us think and behave in a lot of strange bizarre ways but but in the case of william mcintyre he wandered into the police station telling them he wanted to be arrested and jailed because he'd burned down the post office in a town in Washington known as Prescott. So the, you know, police officers are just like, oh, okay, that's, that's a new one. And as he's rambling drunk about his fugitive ways, uh, McIntyre, uh, kind of implied that like he did it and then he was kind of safely on the run for a while 
but that the law was on to him. And he stated that, you know, the law enforcement authority figures were sending airplanes after him that were like following him around and trying, they were trying to track him down using those methods. And he said that he had managed to intercept wireless messages that were being exchanged between, you know, various members of law enforcement that indicated to him that they were like bearing down on him. Like, this story's hard to believe if, you know, if McIntyre was entirely sober, this would be an incredibly difficult story for anyone to believe. Okay, maybe this guy snapped and burned down a post office, but he couldn't have possibly intercepted police messages. He couldn't have detected that planes were chasing him. Maybe there was just planes flying in the sky overhead. So it's easier to just comply with this guy than to fend him off and shove him out onto the street. So the authorities say, okay, well, fine. We'll, we'll put you in jail for the night. And, you know, we'll, we'll appease you. We'll contact the town of Prescott. You know, oh, hey, is your post office burned down? You know, in the last couple of years or however long this guy may have been on the run. Because again, it was kind of implied that like he did this and then he was kind of free for a while. And then suddenly people were onto him. Because I mean, if going through, you know, you don't mess with the post office. You don't mess with mail. That's progress. So, you know, the local police in Portland contact Prescott, like, we got this drunk guy, like, saying he burned down your post office. So after they contact the town of Prescott with that information, they receive a response that in fact, a little less than three years earlier, in June 1918, the post office in the town of Prescott, Washington was in fact burned down. And it was a case that to that point, uh, no one had been brought to justice on. They hadn't caught the person who was actually guilty of committing that crime. So, while, you know, not all the dots were connected, it was generally the conclusion was generally reached at least by the story that I read that despite his belligerent drunken state and the absurd nature of the story that he gave and maybe the whole stealing of wireless messages and planes chasing him was you know paranoia or something on his part but the reason he went into that police station was to be jailed for burning down a post office in Prescott Washington and it seems like he had done just that a couple of years earlier now that still begs the question of all this time later and if he's so concerned about being caught why turn yourself in and why turn yourself into law enforcement in another city in another state um you know there's 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 random reasons why someone might do that um you know the guy may have just gone to a bar in Portland and like everybody else in the city back then got drunk as hell and decided in his drunken emotionally destabilized state you know what I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm finally gonna take responsibility for my screw-ups and he goes to the police station and says cuff me fuzz you caught the great post office fire guy so the article ends with them saying, so um, McIntyre will be arraigned. <laughs> and uh, yes, he will be, he will be taken in and looked into and possibly indicted for burning down a town's post office. So in the end, the belligerent drunk that nobody would have believed who's actually telling the truth. Who'd have thought? That's the twist to my story. 
So again, like all these stories, that was too, uh, that was just an odd little piece and it was too good to pass up. So I thank you all for watching today's video and for supporting my young channel. You can help it blossom even further by liking my videos, sharing them around, subscribing to my channel, hitting up my Patreon. I'm always posting new stuff there to give you bang for your buck. The link to my Patreon is in the description below as well as the links to my Facebook and Instagram pages that are closely related to the content that I am producing both here as well as my primary channel, Steve the Amateur Historian. And all of that said, I'll see you tomorrow.